the pages of your word your word is going to speak to us in a very 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 simple way yet inspirational but again challenging because of the vast amount you've given unto us to whom much is given much is expected and so we appreciate and honor the fact that you've given us much because you can't give it to us if you can't get it through us and so you've given it through us in, in, i mean you've given it to us 2023 that you may give it out 2024 so we thank you that this one is going to come as a positioning to embrace us for the souls that are coming in 2024 we give you praise and give you honor in jesus name and everybody say it amen. amen and amen and amen are we ready for the word yes uh i'm going to i am going to first put a pause on our golden chain series because this is our last sermon for the end of the year and i felt like i should share from my heart hallelujah uh, bring bring an end to this thing so that we can get prepared for the new cycle that is coming glory to god and many of us know that from jan 2nd i go to fast for 40 days <laughs> amen so what was yesterday i went to prepare for a sermon and i didn't preach i mean that very one that prepared and i went like god why didn't i would have watched when you know god gave me something else in the in the night when i was going to sleep you know you can feel sometimes the unction eh? the unrest because i feel like there's something that i believe we should get to know today because i want to remind us that we are all stewards of god's mysteries all of us are what stewards of god's mystery and so my assignment for us today is in first corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 to 2 hallelujah we are all what stewards of god's mystery you take charge of a certain secret that god has given you to keep hallelujah the bible says let a man so consider us as servants of christ and stewards of the mysteries of god moreover it is required in stewards that one be found faithful Glory to God. Now, I'm going to start by saying this, that as a ministry, as a ministry from March 5th, I will say this with no, with, with, with no shame, with no word that I've been deep. I have been deep. Hallelujah. We have chewed the word of God. We have received mysteries. I mean, we have, we have demystified the Christ. And it's just the beginning. Now, imagine March 5th, and all this says you have your bread of life every day. We come on Wednesday, remember Wednesdays? Yeah. And we, I spoke from my heart every, every Wednesday. Then we moved to Sundays and we have received lots and lots and lots and lots of what? The word from God. Imagine every day you've been having the word. Hallelujah. Amen. We've been having the word. The word. And all of you can can attest that the word has been beautiful. The word has been sweet. The word has been what? Sweet. But the question that I want to bring, do we have its fruit? Have we multiplied it? Have we increased it? Wait a minute. Oh, you came the whole of the year to just sit and feed and go back home full and you find a hungry soul and you say, bless the Lord. Have you seen people who a brother comes and says, I am believing God for a shoe. I mean, I'm believing God for a meal. I am hungry, brother. I don't have food. And then you say, God, come and come and pray. But you have 50,000. You have 50,000, right? And say, Lika, God bless you. But that's how we're doing it physically, right? Is that brother loving? No. You have the mysteries, the divine counsels of God that you're chewing every day. But God has given it to you because he knows he can get it through you. And how many people can we go back and say, you know what? This is the fruit. They have, I have fed them with what pastor has been what feeding me that is what i want to bring first to our attention today because in this ministry we we have chewed the word but are we faithful enough 
with what God has given us. Yesterday, I received a new person that they get, somebody called, and this was a Muslim. And they told him about me, and a Muslim said, Muslim, but I'm not Hallelujah. How do I start? Because she has to first get saved. Then she has to first be taught to be a wife. But for she wants her, she knows she's getting a wife anytime. <laughs> but somebody was able to I was able to give this person what God has given me and it is working in them and they think and they believe that I am the man who is anointed for the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I prayed with the lady yesterday. She woke me up at 2 a.m. <laughs> and we spoke for like one hour. Hallelujah. <laughs> but why am I saying that? Because we are going to see what I'm trying to say. If you're faithful, with what God has entrusted unto you. Because God can't give it to you if you can't get it through you. God has brought you to here, this mysteries, because he knows he can get it through you. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we don't do ministry for us. You come and eat for you. No. It is for the people out there. And the, 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 the Amplified Version says, So then, let us apostles be looked upon as ministering servants of Christ, and stewards, trustees. Somebody goes to the bank and they keep their chopper. The bank becomes the trustee of that what? Chopper, right? Because that in that chopper is your secret, your treasure, your land. But it is in that small thing, right? And you take it to, cha to the, the bank and they keep it, right? Do you know that banks also keep titles? Mm. Hey, because I may be speaking to people that are not understanding me. <laughs> this thing where I know the language I'm talking about. But imagine the bank is a steward of that mystery. Because in that paper there are lots of mysteries. Your millions, your billions, your title. That's a secret, a mystery. And that bank is there to do what? To keep it. So it is with us. That God has given us a mystery. Which mystery is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so we are stewards of this mystery. But it says that Christ stewards, trustees of the mysteries, the secret purposes, the secret purposes. And you know very well that I have told from the beginning that this is the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Because the mystery has been what? Made manifest. It has been made what? It's no longer a secret. It's a revelation, right? Moreover, it is essentially required of stewards that a man should be found faithful. In other words, proving himself worthy of trust. How have we proved ourselves? I'm still building something. With all the bread of life that you've heard, gospel prophets, Wednesday sermons, Friday sharings, Sunday, with all those over 100 sermons, have you been found faithful? How many guys have you gone and said, this is my fruit? Because if I'm not careful, this is what is going to get into 2024. And again, come back in 24 and begin the circle and do what? And sit. And again, chew until, 20, until December. So bless the Lord. Come and call it the chairman. Yes, you're living above. Where, where is the fruit? Glory to God. So, but again, I must understand that people grow at a different pace. I must understand that. Hallelujah. People grow at a different pace. But what pieces me, for example, is that I can get somebody who has never seen me. And I just talk with them on phone. And the rate they grow at tell you now, maybe because Musumba Janawe Ngayamba de short. And you familiarize the anointing. Ngayamba, ah, oh no, oh no, maybe, hallelujah. 
Because these guys are not, maybe when they see me also, they'll familiarize. Maybe. You understand? But I realize that people grow, grow at a different pace. And I keep on telling some guys, I, I, I remember telling you that there is going to come a time where well, some people are going to join this ministry, I'm telling you. And they will grow at a, diff, at a faster pace than you have been in. Let, may that not happen. Glory. May that not happen. Somebody stands and says, share with us your bread of life. Look at the pace of growth. No one stands. They shit. Give us a testimony. No one stands. They shit. This is just... You understand what I'm saying? And you expect to grow. But I've understood that many of us grow at a different pace. But I'm not going to work with people who are going to grow like that at a different pace. For me, it will take me seven years. <laughs> the world is coming to an end. The Bible says, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. But I want to give us a story quickly of how this man grew. Uh, uh, Paul, right? Of how Paul grew. His story in Acts chapter 19, chapter 9 from verse 17. I just want to read the story. I want to show you how this guy grows. The Bible says, And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days, some days, some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately, the Bible says, he preached the Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. So uh, he was very hungry, spent some days, and he said, Immediately, immediately, did it take him one year to grow? Did it take him two years to grow? Did it take him months to grow? Days. Days because he had experienced a certain revelation of that Christ. Hallelujah. So immediately he went out to preach that he is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Guys, let me tell you something. There's no excuse for instant growth in the things of God. It is you who determines. You can desire to immediately grow. You can desire to choose and say, man, I'll take my pace. And one of the things I have learned that it is as simple as listening and following, these things, as following instructions from the altar. When I'm listening to my spiritual father, to me it's about instructions. And I'll tell you that they are, they are, if I compare my growth from ever since I started taking him serious up to now, I can tell you that I have grown and, that, and the way I preach the Christ is different from the way I used to preach Jesus. I used to preach Jesus as the Son of God. Because many of you know Jesus as the Son of God. But many of us don't, don't, don't know Jesus as the Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. Paul preached Jesus as a son of God. Then he went to Saudi Arabia, I mean Arabia. And he taught the Christ. I desire that all of you may come. I desire all men that you may be shaped. First dimension. Jesus is the son of God. That's for all babies. But then has Christ been revealed the wisdom for the mature to you? Am I making sense? Am I making sense? So every time I I started obeying the instructions. What he puts, he puts, and then I started growing at a faster rate compared to if I compare the time I I, I, sub, I was submitted at this guy, just a few things compared to the days that the years, I'll tell you something, I have tremendously grown. Mm. And I can feel it, I can sense it, and I've realized something that if you know that you have grown, it's by the kind of people who come to you. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. So Guys, let us immediately grow. This thing shouldn't take us eight months. Some of us began as babies, but we are still babies. There, ah! you, we cry like these babies. Glory to God. Now, God expects expects us as a ministry and as as individuals to serve Him better and to serve Him well. Why? Because of the proportion of the mysteries that he has given to us. 
I always tell you guys, I am deep. I am. I am. I am. I preach the Christ. And I'm just beginning. But I'm growing in the Christ. The message I'm going to demystify in the next five and ten years, I do not know. Because I'm also growing. So God expects us to serve Him well and to serve Him better. We've got to be faithful to the mysteries that God has given us. We've got to be faithful. We've got, this is my sermon for the end of the year for, for my seed. We've got to be faithful with what God is giving us. Glory. Luke chapter 12 from verses 37. The parable of the faithful and the unfaithful servant. So remember, I want to read from verse 37. The Bible says, Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Hallelujah. I said to you that he will guard himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants. But know this, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to, bro- uh, to be broken into, right? Therefore you also, this is Jesus, therefore you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming. Do we realize the the seriousness of the last days we are living in? Do we realize that, guys, we are living in the last days? Do you want to go and present your car before God? Or do you want, or you want to present souls before God? Do you know that people are dying in sin? But how can we walk every day without that burden? How, how can we walk Every day without this conscience that you know what this man can come anytime. You have loved ones that are not saved, but it doesn't push you to the place of prayer. You have friends that are not saved, but it doesn't push you to a place to, to try to preach the Christ to them with a mistress. Mistress are not here to 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 <laughs> for it. <laughs> you just have an angry feet. No, no, mistress are here for divine what purpose. So Jesus is saying, the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Then Peter said to him, Lord, do you, do you speak this parable only to us or to all the people? Then he says, and the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward? Stewards of mysteries of God. That's my title, right? Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on that day when he is not looking for him and at, at, an, at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him into two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Verse 47, and that servant who knew his master's will, the mysteries of God, the mysteries of God, the divine counsels of God, the comprehensive insight into the ways and the purposes of God. Huh. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is just not, this is just not you knowing, but now God loves me. No, the will. He has made known unto us the mystery of his will, the divine, the comprehensive insight into his purposes and the plans of God. And that servant who knows that, he says, and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with you. Then here is where my sermon is. And he says, for everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. I have given you this mysteries. Okay? You have read your bread of life. You have I've given you the mysteries. I'm expecting much from you. I am asking more. This is Jesus asking more. But how can he give us also more if he can't get it through us? Hallelujah. Okay, with all the mysteries that you know, how many souls have we won to Christ? With all the mysteries, with all the goodness of God upon your life, 
How many souls have you won to Christ? How many people can say, this is my man of God in terms of, you bless me. I love the God that you love. I want to smoke like Jesus that you're smoking. How many can literally say, this is my impact this year with all that God has given me? Oh, 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 maybe it's life. It's the pursuit of life under the sun, S-U-N, over life in the sun, S-O-N. For it's life under the sun. But it's not the pursuit of life under the sun because these things are going to perish. If it is life in the sun, S-O-L, then where is its fruit? How many souls? <laughs> I have this thing I want to talk from my spiritual father. At least 10. At least what? 10. With all that you've eaten, You with all the money that you have, you've never taken 10 people out. I'm giving an example. You've never reached out to 10 poor people to just buy for them some kind of time of 1,000. So for, for everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And there's something about this ministry that if you're here, you're going to eat. You're going to eat. God is going to require. God is going to require. What have you done with that, uh, with that revelation? I'm living from? The contemporary version says, if God has been generous with you, he will expect you to serve him well. This is God's expectation. He expects you to serve him well. But if he has been more than generous, which he has been, he will expect you to serve him even better. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. This person woke me up at 2 and I'm like, my devotion started at 3. And we spoke for 57 minutes. Then I had to end again. <laughs> I need to prepare you for the sermon. You understand what I'm saying? Because I am... It has ceased to be me. I'm no longer doing this thing for me. I'm giving myself to it because when somebody... When somebody... <laughs> when somebody... Are expecting you to bless them. When they're expecting a lot from you. And when they're expecting food from you, do you sleep? This thing has stopped to be about me. This is not me. I am here for you. Because I would also go and, you know what, sleep at three and then just come and say, shh, shut up, you understand? But I want something that God will give me that when Sharon receives this, she will go back home and say, ah, this ministry has blessed my family. Hallelujah. Because some of us come and eat, but for us, Every time you're eating, you have no vision or purpose to say, you know what? I think I should take this thing out. Now, this is why you will not grow. This is why you will not increase. Because for you, it's just, I, I just want to eat and just eat and just eat. How can you come to church and receive the word of God and in you there is not even any hint? I was saying there is somebody who needs to hear this. Hallelujah. But France will come. Canada we come. Take it up with you. Maintain confession. I'm not maintaining confession. Because we need wisdom. Open rebuke is better than what? Let's go to France. Nga you eating alone. Hallelujah. Nga you eating alone. We ask of the nations. You ask of the nations. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we've got to be faithful with what God has given us. That's what I'm asking for us today. We've got to be faithful with what God has given what us and what God has revealed to us. Because if we are faithful with a little, God will entrust us with what? With much. Now listen to me. Every believer is a potent nation. Every believer is a potent nation. To be potent means that you're having an influence, right? You're having an what? An influence. A nation is people, right? So every believer should have influence over what? People. Every believer should have influence over because that is your inheritance. That is your. It's not physical. Mwanange, bampa de landi yange in in land title forty by what? Hundred by what? Fifty, right? 
That's physical, right? Mm. That's your land title, right? Yeah. Okay, that's your inheritance, right? But in the spiritual, it's not that one. In the spiritual, it is influence. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. When we say this is your inheritance, this is the this is your territory that God has given you, not to control men, but to liberate men. You have influence. You have influence over people. <laughs> the Bible says, ask of me and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. Inheritance. So the question that I'm asking us, are we a pointed nation? Yes, you are. But you have influence. If you open, if you go through your phone right now, your contacts, and say, sir, we're going to do this. And Sharon responds. Deborah, we're going to do this. And Deborah responds. Not, not, not asking for money, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and those ten will say, yes, sir. Then you have influence over ten people, right? Isn't it? All your contacts. Are there people that you, call, that you command authority? Hallelujah. I'm just opening our eyes. Ask of the nation. I am, I am a nation. Nations are mine. Yes, nations are yours. Where is the influence? Glory to God. How many people are influencing in your life? How many guys can you say, let's go to church? How many guys can you say, excuse me, that which you're doing is wrong? The Bible says, and then I say, I respect that. How many people are waiting to hear from you? How many people's lives have been transformed and are transforming because of you? How many guys look at you and they say, that's my reference. You become their benchmark. Like they study you. When it comes to marriage, they study you. When it comes to the way you talk, they study you. Because you're a child of God, right? When it comes to fight, they study you. Come on. We are a potent nation. That is who we are. But we must come up from this place of mediocrity. No mercy. Am I making sense? I'm preaching. I'm, I'm, I don't know why the guys are quiet today. Last time the guys were shouting. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to potent people? How do you give us the least number of people we can influence, right? Because this is going to be the direction for our heaven next year. And I'm going to make an announcement towards the end of the service. Hallelujah. You remember Moses and Jethro? When he was sitting every time and listening and listening to people and he was wearing himself out. And then the father comes and tells him, that, that thing you're doing is not enough. It's to kill you and the people. But here's what I want you to do. Get some people, a few guys, eh, and empower them. Hallelujah. Empower them and let them also empower other people. Hallelujah. Let them listen to those small, small things. You listen to those ones. I mean, let them listen to those ones. Eh? And then, when it's a bigger picture, you call, they call you. Hallelujah. That's why some of you, I mean, if, if, if pastor is coming every, every Wednesday, teacher, but I am sorry. Then again, I I go to Susan also. But I get yeah yeah. Nigga, pasta is busy taking care of small issues. Number one, pasta tasumbi bolunje. Yeah, that's it. His pasta is not deep. How can I be coming every from from house to house of my members and I'm sitting cancel I'm canceling canceling what? We fought. We fought over food. We fought over sex. <laughs> My neighbor, I, I mean, I leave the altar. I come and talk about food. My neighbors abused me. Hallelujah. And I realized something. I realized something. <laughs> that those queries have stopped coming to me. We are growing. Hallelujah. We are. But when I had just started, man of God, Masekatara. Musumba. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Are you busy? <laughs> <laughs> but nowadays, 
they deal with it. If it is too much and you call me, that is what we're supposed to be. Imagine everyone going to Apostle Grace, everyone, but I'm my mother, Apostle Grace. What if what he died? He will die. <laughs> me, I say with just four people, I'm dying. Hallelujah. <laughs> And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Hallelujah. So, how can I entrust Deborah with ministry? First give her, let's see if Deborah can mobilize ten people. Then she can stand and be an usher. Let's see if Sharon can mobilize 10 people. Then she can what? Then she can minister. Then can she move from 10 to 50? Can they move from 50 to 100? Can they move from 100 to 1,000? So, in other words, you influence. At least we are saying in a ministry, at least have an influence of 10. Let's start by 10. Let's mobilize 10 and begin with the 10. And you'll be with them. Hallelujah. I like my I like where my church is, and you find these guys. They call them Basumba. They're with their they are with their 10. And, and, and they are pastors and they call them Musumba, 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 Musumba. These guys have understood this thing. Tell them to get 10 people. 10? 10 people? <laughs> and and, and, and they, they are pastoring. Hallelujah. Now you tell my guys get 10 people. It's like you told them to get 600,000 people. Hallelujah. So we, we're saying, we're going to start now. Here is the thing. Next year, I'm going to have a service, after the service, I'm going to ask for those. I'm going to have a meeting after those. Because it's a, the minister is going to change a little bit. Hallelujah. Say, so, from next year, we are going to get 10 people. I'm talking about souls, not somebody from a different church. <laughs> I just, they just get that I got is in front of ah, They have their apostle grace. Hallelujah. What do I look at? Ah, 10 souls that you've won to Christ. And those 10 souls are the ones that are going to pour your 2024. And you're going to empower them to also do the same. Now, somebody would have clapped for that one. But you are clapping because I've said it. That is rebellion. It's not revelation. I would expect him to say, Musum, but you could be We are going for it. Ten souls. 2025 also, we shall might increase to 20. But for 2024, we are saying 10. Guys, listen to me, and I'm so open in this service because there are those who want to listen to this sermon. If you're that's going to be an Averian. If you're an Averian, you must be able to mobilize 10 people in the first three months. Some of you say, ah, my 10th, December 31st, 2024. <laughs> ah, it took you the whole 12 months to complete your 10th. There are those who will bring their 10th <laughs> in December. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The first three months. You're going to mobilize for me how many? 10, Ten people. If you are that person, stay after the service. But if you believe you don't have the capability, don't come for the meeting. I don't want this thing of you coming for the sake of coming. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Please. Even though you, I get zero people here, it is well. And for information, I already have some more I've got the ten. I mean who are who are serious. They sent me one more than yesterday. Hallelujah. Because church is not peace building, right? Church is people. And I learned one thing from my spiritual father. Ah, need that. But to first time you're talking with people, be the your church, ah, be building. You first leave that one. First get people. First talk to people. 
This thing upon you is heavy. This thing upon you is big. But listen, talk to. I didn't get that one at first when I got, when, when I met him in 20 last year. I didn't get it at first. I had a man say, hey, Kamsaja was right. First focus on. Glory to God. Because when I first start ministry, get one such church, we believe at Panange, to renting, a Buma, and what, and you have four people. Come at that Ambote. You first get people who can, whether they're in Gayaza, whether they're in Kurabiro, whether they know there's a certain what? Man. Because you have to first prove that you can get 10 people. Then you prove that you can get 50. Then you prove that you can get a hundred. Because if you can get a hundred, I'll give an example, right? And then you say, I want to launch. You will definitely get a hundred people. Because you have got the capability in the realm of the word. Spirit. But if I can't get a hundred, I will not... You understand what I'm saying? Yes. You, you, you get it. Eh? Mm. Then I can know. If I call Emma and call Amy and call Sharon and call Deborah, who are getting their tail, and I say, you know what, on the 14th, we are launching higher. Then you get a building in relation with your capability. Am I making sense? Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. So it's a minimum of 10 people every year that you can influence because the increase that is from God, listen to me, because I'm coming to them, not really preaching like someone of yours. The increase that is from God is in multiplying what you have been, what has been sown. Because I'm now coming to the end. I'll repeat it again. I'll repeat. The increase that is from God is in multiplying what has been sown. I'll say it again. The increase that is from God is in multiplying what has been sown. And I want to explain that. Because some of you had a little bit of that explanation in on Friday. And I want to show you why we have not been growing. Why you have not been growing. Because you thought you failed to understand the difference between bread and seed. And I'm going to come to that. But the principle of multiplication, the principle of influence, the principle of growth is in that seed time and harvest. And I'm going to explain that. But we must know that there is an increase that comes from God. The Bible says in Colossians 2, 18 and 19, Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. With the increase that is from God. We must understand Increase in God's perspective. Hallelujah. For example, you can't have, you can't start, you you can't launch a ministry and you want one thousand people. Nenga, you can't uh, you can't mobilize ten people. Now, if there's somebody who has understood that by experience, it is what it is me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5, Paul says, Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one? And that's very important. There are people that, although I preach and demons five, they are not for me. I'll tell you something. There are people, whether they, they listen to Apostle Christ, and they'll say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That man is not deep. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because even him, he says, while you are, while you, there are people that are not for me. Hallelujah. There are people that are not for what? Me. And I must also understand that there are people that are not for me. And that, that, that will help me fight. Hallelujah. Then he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the what? Increase. So there is that increase that is from God. And I'm going to explain to that how that increase comes. Because that's the increase I want to take into 2020 for Isaiah 55 verses 10. And I love this portion of scripture 11. The Bible says, for as the rain comes down, as the rain 
comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth what's the earth the heart right what is the rain the word right okay and it make it and make it bring forth and bud listen that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater hallelujah that it may give what seed to the sower and bread to the eater so as if i want to understand this i am both a sower and a what eater I must know that I need both seed and bread. And understand that I will not take bread to people and expect multiplication. Now, many of us are sowing bread that is meant for you to just chew. And when we go out there, we're going with a seed that is meant to what? Multiply. Because seed does what? Now, many of us are ministering bread and we're expecting and, and we are wondering why we are not increasing. We are wondering why we are not multiplying because we are ministering bread. Bread was meant for you to eat. Bread was meant for you to chew and then you grow. You grow. It's meant for your growth. Not for multiplication. I'll give you seed to the sower. That when you take seed to someone's heart, it, 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 it multiplies. That when the brother hears the seed that God has given me, the brother is going to be restless and the brother will find Susan. And then Susan, come and see this son of God, the Messiah. And he also she receives the seed, then goes and finds the brother and finds that. Come and see, because that is seed. <laughs> he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Then verse 11 he says, So shall my word be, we're going back, that goes forth from my mouth. Right, right? It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Some of us, you are like using it, and <laughs> the, we say, it, it shall return void. Nobody form that gives me shall prosper. I know we can use that in the second dimension, but the context that this seed will accomplish its purpose. This bread will accomplish its purpose. Just take this seed to the world and I'll give you the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I tell you something. I refuse to say things that don't work in my life. I have learned to first see that it works, then I preach it. Because I've learned the secret in ministering seed. And I've done it. And I know it is multiplying. Hallelujah. Amen. It is what? Multiplying. Now, seed to the sower, bread to the eater. The principle. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10. Very simple. Because some of us can see it as money, but really, the principle of seed is that, that the seed is the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, the Bible says, Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, Hallelujah. Now listen. Who supplies the seed to the sower? It's God. You can build your, the church your way. Many people are building the church, but they're building their kingdom because they're building it without the seed. They've never been ministered to. God hasn't ministered to them seed. But they are building church, and whether you want it or not, that church will will crumble. So you either build church your way or you build church his way. And you can't build church without being ministered to. Because you're first ministered to. <coughs> Ministering seed to the sower for you, uh, both, I mean, now he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. So God multiplies your seed that is what? Sown. Because if you've got that seed, 
Now the parable of the sower is this. That the farmer went out to sow what? Seed. And when he sowed seed in the ground, God multiplies the seed. It is the increase that is from God. Where somebody says, man, I have found a man a God. It is God multiplying himself because it is the increase that is from God. Amen. And you ask yourself, why some churches are growing? A gentleman just sits 15,000 people, 20,000 people on a given Thursday, and you tell me that is him working, or it is God ministering seed to him and supplying the seed to him. And you expect him to fall. Because the principles are different. Because for my, me, my father's ministry to fail, means God's word has failed. I will stop believing the Bible. I will stop it. I will stop it. I wake up in the morning and they tell me, my father's ministry, a good day. I'll say, God, now can you touch? Can you Because the word of God can't fail. Amen. Amen. Can't. The oil, I get up from glory to glory. Mumulinde. Tanatanika. 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 And guys haven't understood that you're fighting the work of God. You're fighting somebody who's, who's seen. You see, Jesus Christ, they thought that by killing him, Babufunye, this wisdom was foolishness to those that were, I mean, to the world. Because they crucified him and Jesus multiplied him so. They can't kill him. Because now to kill Jesus means you kill Peter. You can't. They multiply themselves. Can you, to, to get that man of God and fight him. You have to first fight with me. You have to go first to me. I'll make, sure, I'll make mention of his name. Then you go to Apostle Grace. So what I can hang. So on Kobe. So on Kobe. Nanaka Sukubik. Because I'm in the heavenly places. Amen. So to get to me, you first get to Jesus Christ. Then you enter in Jesus Christ. Or you call no one. Or you call fully. Kadu or mother. Then you come to Apostle Grace. That is over car. Increase that is from. So, he gives you bread for food and then multiplies the seed that you have sown. Here's the thing. Many of us are ministering from our understanding. Okay? Because bread is meant for you to eat. You read John 3.16 and like it. Eh? You are growing. You are growing. You are growing. Now, many of us, because I've read John 3.16, the world needs to know John 3.16. And I want to show you how I used to wonder. I went somewhere and I preached some sermon. It was in Noah's Ark. Preached it very well, even better than better than Kayanja. Then Kayanja, this guy had Kayanja on, 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 on the TV talking the same thing. And the thing hit him. But I was like, I share this thing in our fellowship. The same thing. I realized, no, 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 no. Mine was bread. His was seed. For him, I was ministering seed. I was ministering bread. And I want to say, my father can say, God loves you. Even me, I can come and I tell you, God loves you. But from what place am I saying God loves you? I could be saying it from the place of bread. And when he's saying it from the place of seed, who is with who's who will have power? So you, you you ask why somebody can say the same things, but the other one has more results. No. For your minister in bread. <laughs> minister in seed. He has a certain revelation concerning the love of God. For you don't have any revelation. For it is just John 3, what? But have you understood the revelation of God? The love of the Father. Have you experienced it? When somebody experiences that love, he has got sinned. And when he says, God loves you, 
It comes with a power and authority that just commands your spirit and soul to believe that God loves you. Am I making sense? Now, bread for food is your understanding. Would you every day be by the word? Do your bread of life and you grow. 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 But as you are doing your bread of life, there is that bread. There is that bread. Like some of us, one of us here knows living from above his seed. Neta nategeira. There is that bread that turns from Logos to Rema. I can say God loves you, John 3, 16 from Logos. The Bible says God loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. And then it is Logos. That's a good thing. Right? Then somebody can say, God loves you from the place of Rema. That is seed. Am I making sense? Because I want to paint a picture. My mom, spiritual, wrote something and I want to read it for us. She said recently, we don't read the Bible to only hear what it says but to get the pattern of how God works, speaks. Thank you. We don't read it, not only to say what is it. John 3, 16. Ah, didn't go to the streets. <laughs> John 3, what? 16. Bring what seed. Ah. Get the pattern of how God speaks. Because the pattern is in how he multiplies seed and gives bread. Now, the difference between seed and bread, right? So that we can minister what he has been given to us. Hallelujah. First of all, Romans 10, 17, the Bible says, So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word there is Rema, not Logos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go beyond ministering from the written word of God to ministering from the spoken word of God. Rema is that personal revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. That scripture that has inspired you. And I don't want to tell you guys what is your standard, but I'm going to say, where is the seed? But you don't get it. So it is the inspiration. How come that we're all reading and John 3:16 has stood out for you? Except that God is ministering seed to you. Except that God is trying to tell you this is the revelation. So this is the revelation. I believe that everyone has a place that fulfills the scripture that no eye has no, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Every one of us has something in the inside of you that no eye has what? Seen, that no ear has heard. That is the thing that will take me to the place of prayer. Because I know once I get it, it might take me one week, it might take me six months. It might take me one year, but I will wait to, for him to minister that seed, that revelation. But when I get it, I will go and I will command authority. And I will speak and people will hear. That just go in and struggle and struggle because I have the word of God. Many times I shared and I talked from Logos. But it wasn't. Rema. Now I know very well. That I can teach Revelation here, by the way. I can, but it's my favorite book. I can teach Revelation, the beast, Daniel. I can do 70 weeks, I can do all that. But I could be ministering from bread. Hallelujah. Until God says, Go and speak. That's why we we speak as the unction. Now I have a feeling that if I preached on gospel on, 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 on today's someone, the fourth, the fourth chain, eh? I have a feeling you didn't be blessed. Hallelujah. You don't be blessed. Because I was giving a general thing. Hallelujah. So, Rema is seed. Do you have a personal revelation of the word of God? Do you have that which has been... I'll give an example. And, and, and why... Why, why, why have begun multiplying? Because some of you, by the way, some of you don't, by the way, I am multiplying. <laughs> I gave you the dream, the golden chain. That's why I told you my numbering of the summons changed. When someone number five, right? I told you. I was, of course, I was in a dream. And in this dream, I wake up and 
I was sweating, teaching guys, telling guys, guys, you do not have to die to go to heaven to live a glorified life. No, you have to live the glorified life. We are to live the glorified life here now. And I gave them the reason. Why? Because God forward knew us that one is done. And I was saying this in my dream. Then he predestined us that one is done. Then he called us that that one is done. Then he justified us that that one is done. And now, this, this is me in the dream. I'm saying the same words. Then I say, you think that he has not yet, he has not glorified how, I mean, he hasn't glorified us. You think if he has given us this for, we have to wait. And then I knew that God is calling me to some. And I knew my message is in the line of glorification. My very first sermon that I preached from that revelation was living above. And I can have its fruit. My very first, with that understanding that I don't have to go to heaven to live a glorified life. I don't have to go to the hospital to believe that I am, I am healed now. I acted. That's, 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 that's present truth. Now, I began praying about this thing. Okay, praying about this thing. Now, on 19th December, no, 19th October, that's why many of us, many of you look at my status, episode, this, new new circle. Yeah, hallelujah. So, I knew today, I want, it was a Thursday, and I knew today God is going to speak to me through my, through my spiritual father. I knew it, I knew it. That day, it was, I, I spent time in my birthday, to wait for the Lord. I was so anxious. I knew something was coming. So, and I was in my room and he said something. I was speaking about speaking in tongues. I remember very well. And he said, some of you, for example, when the man of God lays hands on you and you're slain. And I remember in a dream, he came to me, laid hands on me, and I was slain in the Holy Ghost. And I kept praying about it. Then he said, when you receive that kind of thing in a dream, just know that your spirit has received everything. I was like, "Uh uh-huh. That all you need to do is just pray in tongues. The more you pray in tongues, you, you, you bring out everything that has been imparted to your what? To your spirit. I knew. My 2024 is done. So I said, Rikali, Bakota, Lila. Then recently again, recently, as I was praying for the assignment, because I wanted to know my assignment. Because I, I, I just want to do things. You know? Because you, you guys know me. I just say, I go, eh? To get in there. Get in there. I can't say this. Hallelujah. So, it was my feeling. It was brave. I was ministering brave. No matter what I was So, he talks about how to know your assignment. And he said something very profound. That's why I told you, okay, if you know your man of God, take serious the things they say. If you say I'm a man of God, but I take the of the things I said the whole time. Hallelujah. He said something. This assignment begins with a revelation that hits you. It begins with a revelation of God that captures you and you capture it. I mean, wait a minute. I have this revelation of Romans 8.30. Because it's what I took. I knew my assignment has what? Begun. Hallelujah. So, I knew everything about me is this thing. This is seed that God has been ministering to. Man. Am I making sense? So, I began getting this thing and giving it. Giving it. And I have this group from Canada. I just gave one person like this. Somebody sent me a message and said, Manange, there is my friend on a spiritual life support. I minister this person in less than one week. She calls another person who was, who was on a spiritual life support. I give them and it starts multiplying. You understand what I'm saying? It starts what? Multiplying. And I realize that this is God supplying the word. The seed. Because I'm now ministering seed. And the multiplication is coming so what? Easy. Am I making sense? I am not. God is introducing me. They, they send me a man of God. They send me a phone. Blah, 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 blah. You get the point. Why? Because I am ministering seed. And God is multiplying it and supplying it. Now, you're telling me that I'm not going to see you increase? Me? Unless this word doesn't work. Am I making sense? Yes. Now, let me finish with this. 
Proverbs 29:18. The Bible says, where there is no vision, no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law happy is he. I want to pick this next week. I mean next year also. It's very important when the time is right. Now, that word there is kaza. You remember? Vision and it represents three things. I want to show you what seed is. As you are reading, as you are reading, as you're reading, where there is where, if you don't have that vision, I don't care. I do not care. You won't see increase. That vision in th- means three things. One is revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. Revelation. God is God has ministered now revelation to you. Number two, it is a dream. Where there is no revelation, where there is no dream, because some of you, you get your assignment or revelation through a dream that you had. Mine was a dream that I had. Hallelujah. The, the other one is the oracle, the utterance of God, that God speaks very audibly. So you want to know what, how you can get seed? It is through revelation, through dream. And through what? Oracle. Be by the word. Faith comes by hearing. Yeah? That's first. By hearing. Then he defines the hearing. Hearing by the word. By the word. The spirit of God whispering a certain revelation concerning that word. Mm. Oh, the spirit of God opening your eyes to a dream concerning something about it. Oh, somebody gives you a very audibly spoken word. Once you get that thing, that is what God has ministered to you as seed. Now, I know very well that if I stood and I ministered from Romans 8.30, take me anywhere and I minister that thing, people will get blessed. Because it's not me ministering. It is the minister who is Jesus Christ ministering through me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what will bring influence. Someone have clapped for that one. So if you're talking about failing to mobilize people, failing to get 10 people, listen to me. Take one seed. Here we, here we go, take one seed. Take your seed. Take what? One seed. Get to know what? We are entering 2024. All I'm asking you in this circle, position yourself. Let God minister to your seed. Get that seed. That God is going to minister to you. Run with it in 2024. If you don't have first people, don't come back to other ministries. Now, many of us are going to run and get married. You want a car and you want bread. But seed brings you the word bread. Let's come to the end of this cycle. Let's get into that time I want to pray and fast. All I am going for in my this new circle is seed. That's all I need. I want him to minister seed to the sower. Minister seed to the what? You guys have eaten a lot. But it's time to be a sower. The farmer went out to sow, not to teach. Hallelujah. Not to do what? Not to teach. Okay? So let's position ourselves in 2024. Father, minister, seed, that I may go out and sow. And let's watch if you will not be a potent nation. Let's watch if you won't influence people. Because I want to guarantee you, the world will respond to you. The earth will yield to you. God is going to give you power over men, power over the things you want, and power over yourself because it is seed. I'm going to ask us again. I'm going to ask us again. Let's not miss this cycle. Why I would have preached the golden chain about living a justified life as a golden chain. All of you are justified, right? It will make no sense today. I'm sure it will make no sense today because all of you are justified. What is pastor telling us about justification? Hallelujah. But I'm telling you that, hey, maybe some of you don't have seed. <laughs> and if someone is actually for you. Now, you've been struggling financially, struggling to win souls, 
struggling to do that. Then if you do, if you miss the cycle, let me tell you something. We're going to come back in December. If you don't do this thing, you're going to find yourself with the same things. Financially, struggling financially, struggling all these things. Why? Because the cycle has passed you by. All you need is that revelation. Do you know that that revelation will bring you the money that you need? These guys have ministered to me. I'm, I'm being honest. Hallelujah. Somebody sends you a 500k. <laughs> Somebody sent me 200k. Pass that's a small thing. Two guys sent me 20, 200 in one day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. And you tell me, like I told you, we seek things. What? Above it. Money, all these things were designed to pursue us. They don't, these things don't come to the realm of those that are praying, the seekers. It comes to those that are positioned. And how do you position? Seek after things. What? Above. God didn't say, it's very simple. Matthew 6, seek after the kingdom of God, right? That's your positioning. Yes, these things will pursue you. Glory to God. So, Enter this, the end of this year. Begin to prepare your heart for God to minister, to give you seed. Because you have the bread. The bread is there every day. Daily what? Bread. You just need to go and read the Bible, right? Isn't it? But let him minister. Let him supply the seed that you're going to need to sow. And then you'll be a potent nation. Come on, let's take off time and pray a little bit. Begin to talk to your God. Begin to talk to your God.